How did you first learn about Jesus and his message of salvation? My guess is it was from another individual, a family member or a friend, maybe a co-worker or a classmate or maybe it was at a Billy Graham crusade. But that's how God works to advance his good news. He uses those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Jesus calls us to tell others about him. We call that the Great Commission and find it in Matthew 28, where Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. Now, right after Jesus said that, but before he returned to heaven, he said this to his disciples from Acts 1, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. I want to show you something on this map. Right here is Jerusalem. Judea and Samaria are within about a day's walking distance of Jerusalem. So it wouldn't have been surprising that the gospel would have spread quickly there. But to the remotest part of the earth, well, we think that Luke, the writer, is talking about way over here in Macedonia, or what is now modern-day Europe. What you see in the purple here is where the gospel spread within two or three decades, and what you see in the green is where it spread within about a hundred years. And we know that the good news of Jesus Christ traveled from Jerusalem like wildfire across this region to modern-day Europe within about 20 years, two decades. Seems like a snail's pace to us today, but back then that was lightning speed. The primary form of travel was feet, and the primary form of communication was the mouth. So fueled by the Holy Spirit and with the faithful participating feet and mouths of the disciples, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ spread like wildfire through the known world. Something else happened to make for a successful spread of the gospel quickly, and that was about 300 years prior, Alexander the Great conquered the known world, most of this region. In doing so, he required all of the people in his kingdom to speak the same language, Greek, and he required them to participate in the Greek culture, and he put in place massive infrastructure, highways and byways for trade. Now, I'm pretty sure that he didn't do that to glorify the Lord. No, Alexander the Great was glorifying himself. But several hundred years later, God uses that to bring glory and honor to his name. You see, everyone spoke the same language. And cultural barriers had been broken down. And roads had been put in place. And all of that enabled God to spread his message like wildfire through the known world. Don't you love how he works. You know, he's calling each one of us to tell others about his son, Jesus Christ, and he has equipped each one of us to do it. For example, how am I sharing this with you today? Via the internet. And I'm pretty sure that those who invented the internet did not do so to bring glory and honor to the Lord, but he is using it now to spread his good news. Someone within your reach needs to hear about Jesus Christ and his life-saving, life-giving message of salvation. You need to share that with them. You're called to share that with them. So what are you waiting for? God has equipped you and he has already gone ahead of you and made a way.